Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, I had a video I was going to release today. It's Wednesday, uh, August 1st. And uh, it was about my current project, which is a transverter for 630 meters. Continuing to play with that band, I wanted to get into digital modes. And to get into digital modes, you need to modulate. Um, you know, I built a CW transmitter because that was the easiest thing to start with. And I've made a few contacts with it, and it's it's great, and I'm continuing to use it. Uh, but I wanted to play around with Whisper and uh, JT, um, like JT9, which is the popular mode for weak signal uh, stuff on that band. Um, and maybe RIDI and MFSK, Olivia, you know, some of those modes, um, which are still... Uh, I keep saying carrier modes, but they're really CW modes uh, in the actual definition of CW, which means simply continuous wave. We associate CW with Morse code because that's the most common mode that's, uh, well, it's associated with it. <laughs> but actually, back in the very early days of ham radio, uh, late 1800s, uh, early 1900s, when spark gap transmitters were still in use, um, where you have an electrical spark that's generating this massive amount of RF and maybe some filtering to try to narrow it down to uh, the frequency range you want to operate on. Uh, vacuum tubes came about and uh, oscillators and uh, continuous wave, which is just a single carrier at a specific frequency. Uh, and for a while there was actually arguments uh, between the two camps, you know, because uh, receivers weren't all that sensitive we didn't have super het receivers yet, or even regenerative receivers, and uh, they weren't all that sensitive. And there were actually complaints from the Spark Gap guys that uh, CW was too narrow. Too narrow. Yeah, well anyway. So CW really means continuous wave, and it's, it's referring to a single RF signal that is just a carrier. So it's as narrow as you can possibly get. Um, uh, and uh, most of these, well, many of these digital modes are really continuous wave modes. Uh, uh, modes like RIDI, radio teletype. If we take a look um, at an image here of uh, the waterfall from FL Digi. There we go. What we see over here on the right is a RIDI transmission. And uh, RIDI is switching between two different frequencies, but it's a single carrier. And there's an offset of about 170 hertz here. And that's that's going to be important for in a moment when I tell you why my initial idea didn't work and I had to take the video down. Uh, so a lot of digital modes like RIDI, JT, um, the multi-frequency shift keyed modes, MFSK, Olivia, Contestia, they are really continuous wave modes. They're they're generating a single carrier and they're shifting that carrier around in frequency and that's how they're modulating right and that's where my original idea fell apart okay I had what I thought was a brilliant idea to make a very simple transverter uh, what I did was I used a flip-flop logic chip okay and uh, I, I, I won't go into too much detail here. I was really elaborate on the video, but a flip-flop, this little rectangular section here, uh, this clock input is a square wave coming in. And for each clock cycle, these two outputs, Q and the Q with the overscore, um, they flip-flop. That's why it's called a flip-flop. So if Q is high and negative Q is low, and one clock cycle comes in, they flip. So then Q is low and negative Q is high. And the result is, for every two complete cycles that come in on the clock, one of those outputs will go through one cycle. It's essentially a divide by two. And I stacked three of those to make a divide by eight. And uh, I was going to use that for my down converter. Because if you, uh, if you take, let me pull up a calculator, uh, 3808 which is in the 80 meter band, and you divide that by 8, 
you get 476 kilohertz right in the middle of the 630 meter band you know so my idea was to use a divide by eight sample the incoming RF from the Yezu and then divide it by eight and feed that into a power amplifier to make my transverter and I thought hey this is great I tested it um, and it did work uh, well here's a compilation image showing where I was spitting out uh, 3.793.6 um, megahertz or 3793.6 kilohertz and this little uh, board here is my uh, RF sampler okay this is the incoming signal from the Azu. Uh, there's a 50 ohm um, ceramic composition resistor which is not a wire wound resistor so it's it's a good dummy load 3 watt resistor so if I put a half a watt in from the Azu, this absorbs most of the power I sample it through a capacitor I had a single transistor circuit here that kind of squared it off into a pulse that could trigger the flip-flops here and uh, the result was that I got uh, 474.2 kilohertz out of the flip-flops with a square wave which would be fine to drive the class E power amp and I was all excited I'm like hey this is gonna work so I did a video on the design and I overlooked something <laughs> I overlooked something really obvious and it was pointed out to me by a couple of viewers and I had to throw the whole design away let's go back to that uh, ready image this is the ready image um, radio teletype with a shift of 170 Hertz okay so let's say that um, I'm transmitting on uh, um, 7085 okay I'll make myself some notes here while I do this all right so 170 Hertz shift would be um, 7085.17 right well okay 7085.17 okay so let's take 7085 and divide it by 8 and we get 885 oops doggone it 7085 divided by 8 gives us 885.625 all right now remember ready is 170 Hertz shift so seven zero eight five one seven uh, point one seven seven zero eight five point one seven would be our mark frequency shifted up 170 Hertz divided by 8 gives us 885.1 six four six two five okay okay eight eight five point six four six two five for the mark frequency and if I subtract eight eight five point six two five uh, we get a shift of only 21 Hertz instead of 170 so the divide by 8 works until you're talking about a modulation mode where there's a shift that shift actually shrinks once you divide that upper frequency by 8 and it breaks the modulation really would not work because the shift would be too small and there is the thing that I overlooked so that design will not work I have no choice but to use the classic design of a mixer that you use in a transverter okay so what is that well let's take a look at a schematic okay so let's take a look at a transverter that already has been built for 630 meters by G3 XBM and uh, this is uh, the design I'm mostly going to be following um, the power amplifier section will be a little bit different because I'll be using that uh, PA that I've already built that I used in the CW transmitter but what we're interested in is this section up here which is the local oscillator 
and this section down here, which is the RF input from the transmitter and the mixer. Okay, so first off, up here, we have a local oscillator. Now that oscillator has a crystal running at 3.2 megahertz, or 3200 kilohertz. Now, that's important because of the mixer down here. As you know, or should know, uh, a mixer takes two input signals and spits out the sum and difference of those two signals. The difference is what we're interested in here. So I've got 3.2 kilohertz or megahertz coming in from the local oscillator. So if I feed in from my Yezu a signal that is 472 kilohertz above that, so that would be uh, four, five, three, six, seven, two, right? Um, which is still within the 80 meter band, so the transmitter can operate. Um, let's say I'm let's say I'm transmitting um, a CW or a carrier at uh, three, six, seven, two. If you subtract the local oscillator from that 3200 you get 472 kilohertz so transmitting in from my Yezu here at uh, 3672 to 3679 I'll get out here at the output of the mixer 472 to 479 kilohertz the, the uh, 630 meter band and it's easy you don't have to do any calculations you just convert in your head that 3672 is 472 and then move on up as you need to. So that's that's the way these work. Um, it's more complicated obviously because you've got this local oscillator up here and he's using a cold pits oscillator and you have to have a crystal. Um, you have to have a crystal that's at 3.2 megahertz or 3200 kilohertz. So that's a little more complicated and then down here you have to have a mixer. Um, there is a mixer available on a chip that he used here, the DBM SBL1, or there's also an ADE1. Uh, I don't have any of those chips, so I'm actually going to build a mixer. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at what a, a mixer looks like schematically. This is what's inside that chip. And it is a uh, what's called a diode ring mixer. Okay, that should be big enough where you can see it. Uh, so, this is your local oscillator input over here on the left side. And then it comes in here through a transformer. Uh, center is tapped to ground. And then you have these diodes in a ring. So your local oscillator frequency is coming in here and at the top and the bottom. Uh, and then you have uh, over here the RF on the right, the R is the RF that's coming in from your transmitter. So that's being injected here at this at this side of this transformer. And it goes into the diode mixer and it mixes with the local oscillator signal. And if you tap this transformer in the middle like they've got here on the right, you see that I? That would be the intermediate frequency output. That pin is going to contain the sum and difference of the RF coming in and the local oscillator. So that's really all a mixer is, and I'm just going to build one. I've got matched diodes, um, IN914s, I think, or whatever the number is. Really common um, signal diode, which I'll use. Um, the transformers, I'm going to wind on toroids. They're pretty straightforward. You've got a certain number of windings on the primary, and then the same number of windings on the secondary, except that they're tapped in the middle. Uh, so that'll be easy enough to wind. So I'll, I'll wind a couple of toroids and experiment to see which ones pass the lower frequencies the best. I don't think that that's going to matter too much. It's going to do its job. It's a really simple circuit. So that's the mixer I'm going to use right there. Um, and I'm going to go with this design and uh, build that up. So yeah, back to the drawing board. Got to start over here. First thing I'm going to be doing is building the local oscillator and getting that working. Um, I don't have any crystals that are at uh, 3200 kilohertz. I've got some that are close, that are within a couple hundred hertz. Um, actually within uh, 
a few kilohertz. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can bend the frequency by putting in a trimmer capacitor. You can actually see here that he's done that. If we uh, if we look um, closer to the schematic here, C1 here is in series with the crystal. It's a trimmer. So that will change the frequency, tune the frequency slightly. Uh, I don't know how much range you can, how far you can bend the crystal with that. I'm going to find out uh, because I might have to bend it quite a ways with the crystals I have. I might not even get the oscillator working, but that's the first hurdle to overcome. I need to get a local oscillator that's running at 3200 kilohertz, uh, and then I can build the mixer. So yeah, I've got some work to do. But anyway, that's where I'm at on that, and that's why the video I was going to release on my transverter um, got scrapped. Uh, I thought I had a real simple design. Uh, I was all excited about that. I thought, hey, this is a whole lot easier to build. It's going to work. But no. <laughs> I overlooked that uh, that dividing, um, shrinking shifts on, on modulation and uh, totally broke it. So live and learn, right? Experiment and learn. That's what ham radio is all about. And uh, yeah, I learned something. Well, to pay better attention. So, next video, um, I'll be showing, hopefully, a working uh, front end down converter for the transverter. Um, and then uh, down the road after that, we should hopefully have a video with the completed transverter operating and making some contacts using JT9. So, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.